And with that, we'll welcome folks to tonight's presentation from the Crime Victim Center of Chester County. It's great to have Denny Tobin with us tonight on uh, the program. Um, that uh, topic, you know, it's the first day of school for a lot of uh, kids today. Uh, something that you know, definitely comes up and doesn't seem to go away and something that we parents especially have to have to deal with and learn about bullying. Bullying what parents can do is the title of tonight's talk. And uh, let's turn things over to Denny at this point. Thanks so much, Mark. Awesome. All right. Here we go. I'm going to share a presentation to get started. Um, so glad that we have folks here. Um, can everybody see that all right? Awesome. Yep. Okay. All right. So yeah. So tonight we're gonna be talking about kind of what to talk, what to talk, what to talk about when we're talking to youth about bullying, right? Um, this is something that um, young folks encounter, that all kinds of folks encounter. And um, and yeah, so we'll unpack a couple of different topics around this. Um, and I'm so grateful to have everybody here tonight. Um, before I get started, I wanna say that I'm not a parent um, and I am not an expert on any one of your lives or even kids or you know, youth that you care about. I am not an expert on their life. You, know? um, you probably have a lot more insight into what's going on with them and what you need as a parent or as a caregiver um, or caring adult. And so I just want to start off by saying that um, I empower you to be the expert. You know, you are the expert and I love hearing people's ideas, feedback, and um, all this stuff that I put in this presentation is um, a lot of different ideas that I've been working with while I've been teaching youth. Um, and it's been really fun and they've responded really well. Um, and it's been very rewarding for me. Um, I'm so grateful to teach youth um, today. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, a lot of this different stuff is stuff that I've learned, stuff that I've put together. Um, also, some of it is research-based. Um, a lot of it is research-based, all of it, in fact. Um, yeah, and so we can get started. Um, but I just wanted to start off by saying I'm not an expert, you know, and we're going to work together tonight. Um, my name's Danny. Um, that's my email. If you want to reach out to me at any point um, after uh, you can always email me and we can chat, or if you have any resources that we talked about tonight that you want more info about um, or more information, um, totally let me know. Um, yeah, I'm always down to chat about this. And um, I work for the Crime Victim Center of Chester County, um, and we do a couple different things. We have counseling, prevention, education, and advocacy. Um, the first um, and probably primary branch of what Crime Victim Center does is we are advocates in the community. Um, anybody who's been hurt by another person, if they end up going to the hospital, police station, or court, we will accompany them to those places. Because frequently, when somebody's going through something really tough, like being hurt by somebody else, it can be very um, hard to make choices uh, and do things that we might have to do in order to care for ourselves the way that we want to. Um, and so our job is to just inform people about their rights as folks who have been hurt um, in our county, you know, where they go, what they can do, um, and how those different systems work. We're not lawyers, we're not um, any, we're our own special thing. We're not part of um, the courts or law enforcement, though we work alongside those people um, in order to ensure that folks feel safe and comfortable and supported. Because um, again, it's like a scary situation to be in, right? Um, those two numbers on the screen are our hotline numbers. You can call that, them at any time of the day or night. Um, all our services are free and confidential. Um, yeah, and so if you ever know anybody who's hurt in Chester County who needs help, they can call us. Even if they're not hurt in Chester County, they can call us and we can help get them connected to resources for where they are um, or what, where that happened. Um, so that's probably the first branch. We also have counseling. So we have counseling resources for people who have been hurt by other people. Um, and you can get free counseling from us um, if you were hurt by somebody. Um, and lastly is what I do. I go into the community and I teach about different things. Um, and so tonight we're gonna be talking about bullying and what um, you know caring folks in young people's lives can do to help those, those folks while they're going through some of that rough stuff. 
um, so we can jump on in. If anybody has any questions, let me know about Crime Victim Center or along the way. There should be an icon um, maybe at the top of your screen or the side that says chat. And if you click on it, you can type to me and I'll keep my eye on that so that if there are any questions that come up, um, I can try to address them. But I'll also try and have some time at the end. Cool. All right, I'm going to get moving along here. OK, so just to go over some of the things we're going to talk about today, and there's a lot of different things we're just going to kind of touch on and, and talk about a little bit. Um, but most specifically, we're going to get into talking about, to start off, um, the space between good and bad um, and what bullying is and what roasting is. And all these conversations are going to come together for us to kind of chat about. Um, before all that, we are going to go and look at a grounding statement that I have put together. Because I think it's good when we start off trainings to really be like, why are we here and what, we're, what are we talking about? And what do I mean when I'm talking about um, uh, helping youth when they are experiencing or dealing with bullying, right? Okay, so we're gonna talk about that. Um, grounding statement, those couple things, and then we'll get into kind of the fundamentals of, of violence prevention, which has its, um, its grounding actually in social emotional learning. So we are gonna end up talking a bunch about social emotional learning tonight, some of the basic aspects of it. Um, from talking about that, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, emotional vocabulary, so how to identify feelings um, and needs. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about coping strategies. And there are two strategic ways, two specific ways you can cope. Um, there is when we're soothing ourselves, and there is when we're expressing feelings. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about some extra uh, language when we're doing those three strategies. Um, we're gonna talk later about how basically when bullying happens, probably we have a young person in our life who is upset, right? And because they're upset, um, they might, I think we've all had that time where we're feeling upset and somebody starts to immediately be like, well, did you try this? What about that? How about this? Did you do that yet? What about that? And you're like, I didn't want a solution yet. I just wanted to talk about it and I wanted you to hear me and understand me. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how when talk a little bit about how when a young person is going through a situation that might be really distressing for them or they are just feeling distressed, right? It might be good to give them options outside of trying to solve it with them. Um, so I'm gonna talk about calming it down, letting it out and figuring it out as a strategy for giving kids choices, especially um, because choices can be really helpful um, considering the last year we had and all the choices we didn't have um, to do over the last year. Um, so we're gonna, that's what we're breaking up in the middle there. We'll talk a little bit about judgments and questions, um, like how to open up that conversation, right? Maybe we'll, just to get it started. And lastly, we will actually look a little bit at bystander strategies, which are ways also that um, kids can help each other. So we're gonna cover a lot of different things, but don't get worried, I'll, I'll guide us there, we'll get there. So first, let's look at our grounding statement. So today, we will acquire tools to help kids learn to identify feelings, cope with out-of-control feelings, and make choices that meet their needs and don't harm other people by building empathy and engaging critical thinking skills around how we build safe, caring community. And this is how we can put a bunch of different things together, right, to create a caring community um, is using social emotional learning. So that is some, some of the stuff we're gonna talk about a little bit tonight. Um, so we'll look at some of those tools. Okay, so a lot of the time when we get into talking about bullying, and I experienced this when we started to teach really young folks, is that when I talk to really young kids, like kindergarten, first grade, about bullying, we talk about good choices and bad choices. Um, and frequently, this is how we frame a lot of things for youth is it's a good or it's a bad thing, right? It's a good feeling or it's a bad feeling. It's a good choice or it's a bad choice. Um, but this can be really tricky, right? Because good and bad um, are very binary and we don't always understand the nuance of what that really means, why it's good or why it's bad and what that quality does. Um, and so 
I wanted to start off by, and you know, of course, all of us want kids in our lives to make good choices, right? And to have good feelings. Um, but I think it's way um, more uh, helpful to think about specific adjectives or things that we want for the youth in our lives outside of having good life, good choices, success, you know, because these are positive phrases. And of course, we all want that. Um, but what kind of person do we really want um, a young person in our life to be? Um, and I was thinking we could brainstorm some of these if people felt comfortable sharing. Um, you can type it in the chat or you can unmute and share some. Um, but if not, I will also just uh, list some as well, because I think it's a fun thing to think about. So I'm going to pull up a whiteboard for us just so that we can do a couple of list a couple of these things. Okay. So So the question I'm going to ask is here it's coming up. What kind of person do you want the youth in your life to be? So, yeah, so if anybody has any ideas, I would love to hear them. Um, um, can you hear me? To me, the, ob the obvious would be you want them to be kind and caring. Yes, I love that. That's great. Yay. Yeah. And I think for myself, I'll add, it makes me think often of how we say we want success for kids, right? So this means like a lot of things, right? Success is actually a lot of different stuff. It means we want like, from my perspective, like fulfillment, right? Like we want them to feel fulfilled in the life they live and the things that they do. Ugh. So we want to like find those things and help them find those things that make them feel like happiest and most alive too. Kind and caring, fulfillment. Okay. Success is like fulfillment and I guess also like financial stability is a thing that I really want for youth in my life, right? We want them to be okay. Yeah, we definitely have more than this, but I know it's uh, it's something we can also just think about and reflect uh, on our own um, if we want to do that. Um, trying to think. Um, I would definitely want my like youth in my life to experience community and like have community and understanding. Um, I want them to have fun. <laughs> so however your list, your list looks like, right? This is just like a great place to start to think about, you know, when we are supporting or caring for a young person, we're nurturing them to be these things, right? Um, to have these things, um, it's a gorgeous thing. Um, and yeah, it's real fun to th think about. Um, and so then it's thinking about like, how do I model that? How do I project that is also like part of this conversation, right? Um, yeah, another thing we're gonna talk about, right, is that um, we have like an emotional understanding, right? So we want someone who is, um, has emotional intelligence, right? And social skills, um, yeah. Okay, cool. I feel good with this list. Does anybody want to add anything else to this list? Sorry. 
All right, I think it looks good. I saved it. So if you want the list after, let me know. I'll send it to you. Mm -hmm. I'll share my presentation again. So I'm really glad we got to talk about that. Got to kind of um, talk about the kind of people we want uh, our kids to be in our life, right? Um, in their life, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. So, um, oh, yay, we got our friend back. Andy, your presentation is a rather small size right now. Oh, is it? Oh, I can make it yeah. bigger. Oh, 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 am I sharing my whole screen? Oh, that's yes, you're sharing, yes. Aha! See, I was doing the this uh, corner trick. Now you you know my secrets. <sighs> the man behind the curtain situation. No, it's all good. Um, okay. So we talked about kind of uh, started with those things. So let's talk a little bit about what bullying is and how we would define it. So I wonder if other people have ideas about how they would define or what they would call bullying. Um, so how would you define bullying? I'll give it a try. Uh, intentionally hurting other people by your words or uh, actions. Yes, I love that. Yeah, that's a great one. I'm just gonna type in here. That is great. Yeah, that's always a word I include in there is on purpose or intentional, right? It's somebody doing it on purpose, right? They mean to hurt you. Yeah. There's one more thing I always add to my bullying definition, which is that it's repeated. Um, or with younger kids, I would just say it's, it happens over and over and over. It's a pattern, right? They keep on hurting me, um, something like this. So that's how I usually define bullying as when somebody is hurting somebody else on purpose over and over, right? And this also helps because when we're young folk, uh, oh man, we make mistakes, we hurt each other. When we're old people, <laughs> you know, when we are whatever age we are, however all old we are, we uh, hurt each other, that's it, right? Sometimes we accidentally make mistakes and hurt a friend when we're trying to have a great, uh, great time, you know? Um, and so it's really good to, to talk about what the actual definition of bullying is, um, because sometimes when we use it, you know, good, bad, like we're like, bullying's bad and, you know, then we start that kids might start to say, oh, that's bullying when it's not. So it's just good to like break down with them. Um, yeah, and then I think it's also important then to talk about roasting actually. Um, how would people define roasting or have you ever heard this term or used this term before? Only like a celebrity roast. I've not heard that <laughs> used uh, outside that. <laughs> yeah, like a celebrity roast, exactly. Yeah, so I think about this as like um, me and my sister, when we are actually mad at each other, we don't always, um, we're not like, I hate you, I'm mad at you. <laughs> Instead, we might just like tease each other about the thing that's bothering us and roast each other about that thing, right? So I found uh, that it's kind of like passive aggressive comments, right? But I found that, you know, there are some situations where it makes me think of that whole thing where like you might have a family member who makes fun of you and it's it's okay right or you have somebody who you who really cares about you and they're like poking fun at you and teasing you and you're laughing along because you think it's pretty funny or it's pretty true right and you have those moments where you're like oh that's that's pretty good um but then uh there are other moments where we might accidentally cross a line or make someone feel hurt this is how i talk to um young folks about, um, especially once they hit middle school age, because they start to get that critical mind and start to kind of uh, make silly jokes with even their friends, right? Um, sometimes we tease each other, we make fun of each other a little bit, right? But the most important thing to remember is noticing whether that other person thinks it's funny or not, right? That's the number one way to tell between if you're roasting someone or you're burning someone, right? And when we burn someone and we burn them over and over again on purpose, 
that's bullying, right? But if we are just trying to roast a friend and be silly and have a good time, and we accidentally hurt someone, um, that's got a whole nother set of rules too, right? So um, the whole thing about bullying is that it's talking about how in our culture, um, folks get hurt um, emotionally, physically. It happens on accident. It happens on purpose. Um, we've all been hurt before, and we've all also made choices before that hurt other people. And I think that at the middle of this conversation, it's really important to own both those parts of us and to share that with kids, that sometimes we might accidentally hurt a friend, that you've accidentally hurt a friend before, and what you did to take care of that situation, right? How you apologized, how you repaired that harm, right? And then on the flip side, having a conversation about what you do when you see someone getting hurt, right? How do you draw boundaries to, to care for yourself and your friends so that people don't get hurt, right? Um, and so that's kind of at the crux of this is kind of that conversation around how harm happens in our communities and what do we do? Um, kids are really smart. So talking about bullying with kids, one of, the first, one of the things I really actually love asking kids is why they think people hurt other people. And a lot of the time, um, those kids say, well, probably because they've been hurt, right? Or probably because um, something bad happened to them or because they're jealous, right? And so kids know that people don't just hurt other people for no reason, right? Um, kids know that uh, hurt people hurt people. Um, and so if we work towards naming what we're feeling, expressing what we need, um, and working together to meet our community needs together, then we can create a space and a culture of care where um, bullying doesn't happen, right? Where harm doesn't happen as much because we have a way to talk about and handle big feelings. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is where the social emotional learning comes in. Um, so I'm gonna talk um, about these couple different ways that we can deal with it when somebody is having a big feeling um, in our life, you know? And that goes for young, young kids to adolescents, um, to adults, you know, everybody. Um, it's a great idea to work on these, excuse me, on these things for yourself, right? And for, to support youth in your life, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so, when somebody is going through something, say it's a very young person in our life who is very upset because they don't want to put their coat on or something like this. Um, there are a couple different ways we can handle this. <laughs> um, but I think that when we're going through an emotional something, it's good to ask if we, we need to calm down first, if we need to let it out first, or if we need to figure it out, or if we're ready to figure it out, right? How, how we're feeling and what we need. Um, and so those are kind of the steps we're going to jump through here. First, we'll talk about calming down. Um, so big, bad stuff happens, bullying, harm, any of those things happen because we usually have a feeling that isn't um, getting honored or isn't being expressed in the way it needs to be expressed, right? So maybe we're feeling really angry or upset um, and we need to calm down. There are like two ways to do it, right? To calm down, we can let out that excess of feeling, that excess emotion with a really energetic coping task, which a lot of us already do, right? Um, or use a calming technique, which would be connecting to a, one of our five senses, typically. Um, so that could be as easy as going outside and looking at beautiful trees, right? Or feeling the wind on our face, um, but it could be, um, you know, having a good taste um, or smell, or touching something that's soft um, or soothing, like the worry stones or something like this. So these are all calming, soothing activities. These are good things to know how to do when harm and bullying happens, because um, if we are hurt, sometimes we need to go and calm ourselves down or soothe ourselves if we were hurt by someone, right? Or we can help a friend to do that um, if they're feeling agitated. Um, and so I would love if some, if we could think of some for each of ourselves um, that we like to do for calming. So I'm gonna just give everybody like two minutes and write down like five uh, things that calm you down when you're feeling out of control emotionally. Um, Cause we all get there. Um,
got a bit of a list here for myself. So I have a couple here for myself. Um, so we want to keep these for ourselves too. And also, um, does anybody want to share any that they had written down? I'll go again. Um, sometimes if you write down what is upsetting, even if you um, just write it down, send it to yourself, you know, and not share it with other people. And um, I have uh, deep breathing, uh, mindful breathing, and just uh, very calm, soft music, classical music or whatever. Thank you for sharing. Those are awesome. Yeah, go for it, Mark. You saw what was in the chat there? Yes, yeah, Kim, thank you for that. Yeah, pet my cat, definitely, right? Cuddling with a pet is probably the number one thing that kids tell me is their favorite way to soothe. Um, because, yeah, of course. <laughs> and next to that, right, is cuddling with a stuffy on my bed. Because <laughs> same to this day. <laughs> you know, um, even if, you know, if you're just cuddling, it's good. It's good to hang out and just chill in your bed if you need to. Um, yeah. So we have some listed for us and we might have like a particular person in mind who is a young person in our life. And we might even already know some of the things they do to soothe themselves. Um, so, but that can put it in perspective, right? For us so that next time that they are having a moment, we can be like, do you wanna do something calming? Like I've noticed that you do this when you're feeling agitated, you know? It's something that we can then help a kid or a young person like hook up in their brain like oh i'm feeling frustrated and when i'm frustrated i can do this thing and it makes me feel calm so i can do what i need to do right um yeah those are awesome options i love that um the writing it down and sending it to yourself is such a good one um and i feel like also when we share from our personal experience um young people are like oh my gosh <gasps> You know, it's like getting neat stories about people we care about, you know, um, getting to know that they're human too. You know, they have these terrible feelings too sometimes. Some of the ones I put were showering, drinking water, deep breaths like you had, um, listen, uh, smelling incense. And I also like sanding uh, wood so that it's really soft and smooth. That's a fun thing. Um, yeah. So we talked a little bit about soothing activities. Yes, walk away, take a break. Um, yeah, that's great. Those are great. Yay, and that's gonna be one of our bystander strategies too later. Sometimes you gotta just leave, right? You just gotta leave and calm down because that's the best thing you can do for a situation. Um, and that's A-OK. -okay. That's great. So these are our soothing, calming activities, but sometimes we're actually in such a um, energetic or, or volatile emotional space. We might need to do something that is energetic that helps us to get our, our feelings out. So I want everybody now to take a couple seconds and just write down some of those, which are gonna be um, more about releasing energy. Um, yeah, might be hot, uh, I don't know, I think of cooking, like cooking to me is this, right? Because you're moving and you're chopping um, and you get to do these uh, things that end in an end result, right? So something that is like, a, I'm doing something about this. Yeah, so everybody take a sec. We'll just list five or something for yourself.
I love that. I love walking outside. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, so Kim shared in the chat, walk outside with the grand cat. I don't know who the grand cat is, though, but that sounds fantastic. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody else, if you would like to share again about um, some of the ones you chose or had in mind. Yeah, taking a walk in general, right? And then you can kind of control it for yourself, right? It could be like a calm, soothing nature walk if you want it to be like a calming thing, but it could also be like super energetic if you want to walk faster, you want to get somewhere far, um, or you go for like a hike, right? That would be more, yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's also such a saying in our culture, right? When you're too heated, go take a walk. That's the thing. So I had cleaning, chopping or sawing wood, kicking a soccer ball. Um, sometimes I play Mario Kart because it is driving. Uh, so it's like very energetic because you're like on the edge of your seat. Um, so it like helps me get out that kind of feeling as well. Um, singing to loud music or dancing are some of my favorite ones. Um, and then remembering, right, that it's a-okay to have a big feeling and need to let that energy out, right? And if we notice somebody in our life who needs this, um, encouraging them in safe and healthy ways to express that, right? Um, like punching a pillow or getting a punching bag or riding your bike. I used to ride my bike around the block like seven times a day <laughs> when I was young, um, <laughs> younger, <laughs> um, because uh, I don't know, it was the whoosh of my block had this roundabout and then it came down a huge hill. So it was this huge whoosh, like I was going down a roller coaster. Um, so I loved that. Um, and finding things that people can do like that, that help them get that kind of big feeling out is great. Um, and we might even notice those things already, like if a young person in our life is into sports or into cooking or into playing music, you know, any of those things can be a couple of those, right? Um, but especially sports is energetic. Um, yeah. So these are some good things we want coping strategies, right, for when we are just out of control emotionally and helping kids to form lists of ways that they can cope in different scenarios um, is great. Um, for when they might be in a scenario that they didn't expect, right? So they can uh, get on that. Um, last bit, right, is if somebody is ready to talk about feelings, right, or figure something out, um, there is um, a great conflict resolution model that I love using that is from um, the Nonviolent Communication Center. Um, it should be NBC. Uh, nbcc.org. I'll look it up and send it to you. Um, but uh, it's great because um, it has um, a step-by-step -step process where we talk through our feelings, um, you know, because feelings are guideposts, the way that they talk about it, that they're guideposts or they're even gifts, right? Um, to us to help us to understand or indicate what we need in a situation. Um, and so when we are talking through feelings, it's that we observe something, that that observation usually gives us a feeling, that that feeling is telling us about a need we have that is being met or being unmet. Um, and that from understanding what that need is, we can then make a specific request. Um, so example, um, my sister and I, when I was younger, didn't always get along. So, and she and I had to share a bathroom. So sometimes she would um, brush her teeth and she would spit out and leave like this giant glob of toothpaste in the bottom of the sink and I hated that. And so I would say, um, you know, oh, this is terrible, you're so lazy, blah, blah, blah. And that doesn't help, right? Because if you call someone lazy, they don't really wanna help you as much anymore. Um, so frequently when we're in a conflict, we're judging other people, right? We're judging what people think, what they feel, 
Um, but instead, um, we could be saying, um, you know, I noticed that that there's a huge glob of toothpaste at the bottom of the sink, and it just makes me feel um, gross. It makes me feel icky, <laughs> right? And then um, I'm needing cleanliness. And so I was wondering if you could just rinse out the sink a little bit after you're done brushing your teeth, right? Super specific request gets to the bottom and to the need of what's going on, right? And then the second part is listening and reflecting what that other person is feeling. So she might say, well, I was just feeling really um, like rushed this morning and um, you always leave the toothpaste in a different spot every day and so I can't find it. Um, and so then we can get, to, and so then I can hear from her, right? I'm hearing that you feel frustrated because the toothpaste bottle isn't in the pl place you always want, right? Um, and so you're needing like order and you're needing things to be in a predictable spot. Um, and so I'll try to leave it in this one spot for you. And then we can compromise and kind of figure out where that middle ground is. Um, yeah. So, and this, we can do this when we're working through feelings with kids too, right? So maybe somebody is having a bad time, something is happening at school and they're being, they're showing signs of having something happen at school that's like bullying, right? And maybe we say, you know, I noticed that when you came home today, you just seemed really down, right? Like your head was hanging, it was a full cartoon. Um, and uh, so I just wonder what's going on with that and how you've been feeling. Um, and we can even, you know, sometimes if a kid in our life is not having an easy time expressing feelings, we can even model that by saying um, and sharing what's going on with us, right? Or sharing high lows um, when we're, whenever we're having dinner or when we have some time in our routine, routine where we can have these conversations, right? Um, and then we can kind of help them sort through these feelings by getting to the need, right? The feeling is an indicator to take us to what we need, right? Um, and then we can help to sort that out. Um, cool. So along with this nonviolent communication that I was talking about, one of the big things we want to avoid is using judgment words because judgment words can um, shut folks down, can get them distanced from what uh, we are trying to figure out together. Right, so um, it's just good to remember to try not to um, try to avoid judge and ask questions and be curious and make observations. Right, can be a lot uh, easier to get to what's actually going on for somebody. Um, I also got this link. That is the Nonviolent Communication Center website. And I just, I love their stuff. I wanna cite them. I want everyone to know about their book and their stuff that they do. Cause I think the way that they sort through feelings is phenomenal. Um, it's super helped me. Um, yeah. So that's that. Lastly, we are gonna talk just a little bit about bystander intervention, um, which are some tools that we can give kids in the moment when bullying is happening in order to um, deal with a scenario. The first and most important thing to remember about being a bystander is that there is not one single way to be a bystander. Like there's not only one way to be a bystander. There are many different ways to be a bystander to show up for somebody else in our life um, and to support them and care for them, right? Um, and so, helping kids to know about these tools and then helping them to know which one maybe is the one that they tend to use and why. Maybe you even think for yourself while we look through them, which one you tend to use as a bystander and why. Um, and none of them are wrong answers. You know, I think uh, there are a lot of different ways that we can approach scenarios. Um, yeah. So let's take a look at some of these strategies. So this is what I teach kids in the classroom. Um, I changed some of the language so that we understand it a little easier, um, but mostly this is pretty much what I teach them. So we have five strategies we can deal with when bullying is happening, or we notice somebody who we care about is getting harmed, right? Some harm is happening. Um, the first and most obvious that kids tend to say is the one right in the middle, speak out and stand up. And speak out and stand up is when you say, hey, I don't like what you're doing. I don't like how you're acting. I don't like how you're treating my friend, please stop, you know? Um, so that's when we're standing up. And most often kids say to me, 
um, that one way to speak out and stand up is to go right to empathy and say, how would you feel if dot, dot, dot. So that's the one that I hear kids say frequently is that if they would stand up, they would say, how would you feel if they were doing that to you? You probably wouldn't like it, right? And that I think is very helpful for kids, right? Grounding and right in empathy. Um, yeah, so that's the first most obvious one is to jump in and say, hey, that's not okay, right? And that looks like in real life, if we see someone being mean or harassing someone at the grocery store, at the post office, wherever it may be, that we jump in, we say, hey, leave that person alone. That's not okay. We don't hurt people here, right? Um, but yeah, so that's the first one that people tend to think of. Next, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the one in the top left corner, check in and be a friend. So this one's a little different. Um, it, speak out and stand up is going right up the person who's causing harm and saying, it's not okay what you're doing. Checking in and being a friend is more like walking up and saying, hey, what's going on here? You know, um, and just kind of seeing, being there, asking questions. Um, it doesn't have to be as um, assertive as speak out and stand up tends to be. It could be much more like just noticing some things. Um, yeah. And another cool thing about check-in and be a friend is that this is one that you can actually use after the bullying has happened, right? So maybe something happened really fast and we couldn't intervene, or maybe um, you know something dangerous was happening or something like this. And so it's really important that kids know that one way they can be a bystander is, is waiting and going to talk to the person after. If they're a little too scared, if they didn't bring their um, superhero cape today to school, then uh, going up to their friend, whoever got hurt after and asking how they're doing and if they're okay and if they can help at all is a great thing to do. Um, just to recognize that's not okay happened. Say, hey, I saw that and it was not okay and I'm sorry, you know, and I'm here for you. And I, I love this strategy. This is probably my favorite bystander strategy. Um, yeah, for myself. Um, on the right top, we have get help. This one is about delegating. It's about getting more people behind you or in kids' case, right, getting a safe adult. Um, so this can look like getting help of any kind, calling your friends over, calling over allies who will support, um, or calling over safe adults. And this is the part where I usually tell kids, um, does bullying usually happen when adults are around? And they're like, no, it doesn't. And I'm like, great. So um, there are a couple of things we can do. Um, we can bring adults into the situation, right? In order to make the bullying stop happen. And that means, you know, we have other strategies too for when uh, that doesn't, that isn't as easy. Um, and beyond that, like when you have somebody who is hurting and then the person who's getting hurt, I talk about this often, if you just go stand behind them and get a bunch of other kids to stand behind the kid who's getting hurt, do you think the bully is going to keep bullying? And they're like, nah. <laughs> so I think that's like another subtle way that we can be like, nah, it's not okay what you're doing, right? Is just standing or standing with a friend or somebody who's being hurt. Okay, bottom left one, we have use a distraction. This one is really good for my jokesters and we have a bunch of them. Um, and it's helpful, you know. There's something to be said for being an excellent bystander or de-escalating tension or aggression or bad stuff by telling a good joke, by um, changing the subject, changing the game, changing the strategy or who you are with, right? Um, and that can be all part of use a distraction, right? Um, so I think this one can be really good. Um, you know, if you're just changing up the game or if, you know, you have a good, uh, good idea for diverting attention, especially for kids who have younger siblings, they are going to know this trick so hard <laughs> because they probably had to do it for their younger siblings before, right? In order to get them to stop focusing on something. Um, yeah. And then the last one in the bottom right corner, I call boycott. And the reason I call it boycott is I mean it in the original, original sense of boycott, that if somebody is acting in a way that you don't like, you don't have to be around them. Um, and so it's, it's the leave strategy. It's if something is too, too intense, it's giving you bad feelings, it's making you want to do stuff that's not safe or could harm somebody, then you should just leave, right? And not be around people 
who make those choices right now. Um, and that doesn't mean we, we have to be uh, boycotting them all the time, but that you know when something bad is happening, we don't have to be a part of it. And by leaving, we show what we're voting for. We say, no, we don't like how, it's, how that's going. Um, yeah. And so I think it's good to, to give these different options and ideas to the youth in our lives. You can even share about what, which one you like, which one you usually use. Um, and you know, why do we help other people? Why is it so important to help somebody else when they are harmed, right? That's another thing that's super easy conversation with our kids, I think, or the youth in our lives, right? Is to say, why, why should we help other people? Why do you think um, we should do that? Um, and just talk to them about community, like what community means to you, why you think it's important um, to look out for each other. Um, yeah. I have a lot of fun, fun teaching kids about these strategies and they have a lot of sweet, amazing thoughts about how to care for one another. Um, so I'm glad all you folks have these different ideas and we got to chat through some stuff. Um, there's anything in particular that you want um, additional resources or information about, you can send um, me, an, you can shoot me an email, you can chat with me right now um, and I can see what I can send along to you. Um, but yeah, that's all my different ideas about bullying and how we can support you through it. Um, giving them strategies to, to use in those scenarios and then also how to help them cope when people get hurt, right? Because it happens. Our communities have harm in them, unfortunately. Um, but we've all been through it um, and we've all done that before, you know? And so it's okay um, to talk about what harm is and how we repair it and how we build a stronger community after. Um, yeah. And then last, just some more information about Crime Victim Center again. And if you didn't get my email before, here it is again. Um, I was so grateful to spend some time with you folks tonight. And if anybody has any questions, I'm here for it. So go for it. Denny, can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. Okay, um, I have six grandchildren um, and the oldest is just started sixth grade middle school. Uh, most of them are just uh, early elementary school. Yeah. And um, uh, I, um, you know, I guess we all worry that our children or our grandchildren will be bullied. and bullying is repetitive, like you said, behavior, right. hurts someone um, emotionally or physically. Um, um, are, do you, can you share any strategies? Like when, if a child finds themselves in a situation that they are being bullied, mm -hmm. uh, you know, besides, you know, what you, you talked about, you know, mm -hmm. like friends helping and, and um, bystanders, but um, I think that would be so difficult for a young, you know, a young child. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully none of them will be bullies. <laughs> you know, we, we all work on that as adults, you know, talking about, uh, you know, uh, kindness and, and what we talked about, but, but the, the young child who maybe is the, um, is being bullied. Right. Yeah. So I think um, it's important to be in conversation about where that's happening, right? Um, so first off, the way we're going to notice that, right, is probably by observing something that's happening with a kid in our life. Um, so be kind of unpacking that stuff. Maybe we notice something. We say, hey, I noticed this thing. What's going on with that? And just kind of open that conversation up a little bit, chatting on that. Um, yeah, but um, as far as supporting somebody who is going through bullying, I think it's good to help them to know coping strategies and know how to get out of scenarios where somebody's hurting their feelings. Knowing how to say, that hurts my feelings. I don't like it when you do this, right? Using our, our nonviolent communication, honestly, can really help. Um, and so that's why I love that resource. I've worked on really developing that for myself. And when we can help teach kids good, um, like lists of feelings and how to express what's going on with them um, so they can draw the appropriate boundaries for themselves. You know, of course, we will need to be in conversation and dialogue with adults in that kid's life, right? If it's happening at school, if it's happening at a sport, you know, whatever it is, the adult that's in charge there talking about what that looks like and what kind of work they're doing to, to talk about it with both those kids, right? Because, you know, whatever's happening, 
somebody is feeling really hurt. I bet you that other kid's probably feeling really hurt and something's going on and that's why they're doing this, right? Um, and so if we notice that this kind of thing is happening, it's really important for adults to get involved and to talk about how it's never okay to use our feelings to hurt another person, right? Because that's what it is at the base. It's about how ultimately when folks are hurting other people, it's because something is going on for them that they need to sort through, right? Um, and as adults, it's really important we provide that space and that support for kids, um, even our, our sports coaches, even our, you know, because all these things are human things that have feelings in them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just trying to make it so folks know more about this because I think uh, whatever is happening, we still have two young people who are trying to get along in this class and um, something is happening. <laughs> we want to support them and make sure they both learn that we should never hurt other people with our feelings and that we should be looking out for each other. Yeah. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Anything else from anyone? All right, Jenny, you did a great job tonight. Appreciate uh, you doing this for us. And for the others who will be watching this on the library's YouTube channel. All right, sounds good. Yeah, thanks for having me tonight. Thanks everybody for being here. Um, and thanks for helping out young people in all our lives. Um, you know, the goal is to, is we can't, change we can't change all of the world right but we can change this small part we have and if everybody does really a lot of work making our little area of the world awesome it's going to be a pretty beautiful place so yay <laughs> all right thanks again denny thanks for tuning in everybody have a good night definitely have a great night Bye -bye now.